Easy guys, Dom here from Cringy Dad Gaming. So in this video, we're just going to be talking about how the fifth beta weekend has gone with the sci-fi survival game Icarus. We're going to be discussing a little bit about how the game is running at this stage and also how the desert biome felt, which is the new one that we had the chance to explore and do a mission within. So I have noticed over the last few weekends that the game has been getting progressively better in terms of its overall performance. Now it's still not quite there yet and it's not perfection but obviously that's something that's going to take time and it is just a good sign that there is some improvement that is noticeable at least for me since I first started playing the beta. Now if you've watched any of my other videos covering the beta weekends then I was getting some issues with frame rates and stuttering and all the things that you usually are linked to optimization within games and you're going to expect this within betas and games that are in early access and you know this game isn't even in early access yet so the fact that getting to this fifth beta weekend and noticing that I can now run the game on a mix of high and epic settings on my RTX 2070 which isn't the most newest graphics card but at the same time I'm getting relatively steady frame rates of bouncing around 60 frames per second it's not quite getting you know a solid 60 but then again it, it won't on PC anyway especially a game like this with so many complex things within a large open world needing to render in and you know the graphical quality of the game is pretty high. I have to say that you know I'm impressed with the development team really keeping their word with what they said they were going to do and that's listen to community feedback and implement changes into the game based on the majority of good positive constructive feedback you know just some of the things they've added to be able to tweak game settings to be able to kind of change the way the game works i am kind of talking about how you know it may be relatively minor but things like the outlining of bushes and things like that when you was going through them hunting they added the option to be able to turn that off adding the option to be able to toggle your crouch which was something you couldn't do early on these are all things that have been fed back by myself and have been implemented into the game. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of other things, you know, that I've not maybe picked up on that have been implemented based on community feedback. Another nice new little addition that I found that they've added into the game is when you're hunting animals, if you hit, say, a deer with a, an arrow, but you don't kill it and it runs away, it used to be quite difficult to try and figure out where that deer had gone, especially if you're in an overgrown area. Now they've added these little blood patches on the floor, which means you're able to track the deer when you inspect the blood. And I really do like these little things that they're adding into the game to make it better. But overall then, let's kind of talk about the desert biome then, because I did find that the Arctic biome, as much as I really enjoyed that, was very, very hardcore, or at least it felt like that. And I don't know if that was to do with balancing, again, something that could change as time goes on. But I'm coming from a solo player perspective, and as a solo player, I did find the Arctic quite challenging. You know, the lack of certain resources, which is going to be relatively realistic. You're not going to find certain things in the Arctic, are you? Not really much vegetation vegetation is going to be able to grow there because of the harsh climate and the cold temperatures. However, I found that the desert biome was a completely different contrast. Now, it is a lot hotter and the temperatures are going to affect you based on the type of clothing you're wearing. So again, it is a choice about what sort of, you know, armor or clothing you're going to wear when you go into this area. But I did find that it was a lot more abundant in terms of a lot of the resources that weren't available within the Arctic environment. There's plenty of areas within this Desert Stroke Canyon area that had trees and fiber and water available and lots of wildlife to be able to hunt. So you can sustain yourself here quite well. But surviving in these biomes is not supposed to be a permanent thing because you are literally going down to these biomes to be able to complete a mission and this is something that I really like that they've added in now and that we're getting a chance to be able to play these missions giving you a focus and an objective to be able to go off and do to be able to complete the mission for rewards if you manage to pull it off it is kind of like a mixture of survival and session based missions and that's kind of the core of the game really 
In this instance, we had to get to the desert biome with a scanner and scan uh, an area for information required for research. Now, one thing I did find is because I had to make myself a machining bench to be able to craft a drill, to be able to drill my way through this cave entrance to the desert area and also make myself a scanner. It took me a while to be able to get all the resources together to be able to make the machining bench because this is something that I'd kind of not really spent much time on previously, although having to gather those resources and craft them, when you land in these biomes, you're starting from scratch each time so you know it's not like you can have all your resources from the last beta weekend available for you depending on how much time you've got to spend doing these things with a beta weekend you've got a very short time window you know once the game releases fully then you know you can just spend a little bit more time i think being able to craft these resources to be able to do this but eventually I managed to craft the bio drill and the scanner, get myself a biofuel container to be able to craft some biofuel, drilled myself through into the desert area and once I arrived in the desert area everything seemed fine until I got a little bit deeper and for some strange reason I got some massive frame drops and it was something I'd not experienced in the game even in earlier beta weekends and I think the game dropped down to something like 8 frames per second and I ended up having to restart the game and then that seemed to correct itself so I'm not sure if that was just a, a, a little bit of a, a bug with the game or my PC just needed a restart who knows but however that was the only main issue that I'd kind of found at this point within the beta weekend Apart from a few little connection issue warnings coming up on my screen, I, I was getting that quite a lot and maybe that's server related. I checked that my home network was working correctly and I was getting over 200 megabytes download speed and 20 megabytes upload speed. So my internet was working absolutely fine, so it wasn't any issues this end. It could have been server side, who knows. But the great thing is it didn't disconnect me. Even though these little warnings were coming up, it didn't disconnect me. So the great thing that I'm kind of trying to get to with what I'm talking about is the fact that the game is showing progress in terms of its stability, which is obviously what they're working towards. They want to have a stable game when they release it. And I think the devs are doing a really good job of ironing out these bugs and issues. Now, a game is never going to be without its bugs. It's, it's never going to happen because any of you know anything about game design and coding will know that once you've fixed one bug and you change some code, sometimes that can make other things not work in harmony with the code and, and that can cause other issues. And trying to figure out where the issue is it's something I personally wouldn't want to be doing. So I take my hats off to these developers who spend all this time trying to figure out whereabouts in the code that there's an error to be able to fix it. But the game was running great and I managed to get through to the area where we had to place this scanning device down to be able to scan the terrain. And in true Dune fashion, a sandworm turns up and you have to fight this sandworm. And luckily enough for me, it panned out a little bit different to my encounter with the mammoth, which any of you who watched my video based on the Arctic biome knows that that ended in tears for me. <laughs> but this time round, I managed to fight off the sandworm. I'm not quite sure if I killed it or not, because after I'd fired a fair few shotgun shots into its mouth and uh, a fair amount of crossbow bolts. It seemed to have just disappeared. I don't know again if that was a bug or if it died or who knows. But either way, I managed to fight it off and managed to complete the scan. And you have to collect these scales on the floor that had come off the sandworm when you were shooting it. And I think these are classed as exotic items because, you know, the voiceover guy in the in the game says that the, the researchers would find those really valuable. And when you look at the thumbnail of these items, they've got a, a kind of a different colour, almost like kind of like a purple and kind of gold kind of outline around the thumbnail, showing that I think it's an exotic item. Now, the exotic items are really the things that you're striving to get in this game. That's kind of like the thing you're going to be able to trade with and, I guess, earn rewards and credits for to be able to buy and spend on things in game to be able to make your next drop maybe a little bit easier for you so you haven't got to spend so much time crafting stuff yourself. And I did like how you could actually craft different types of arrows and 
improvised weapons from these scouts as well although I didn't get a chance to make any of those or test them to see how good they were and how powerful they were because I wanted to take these scales back to the drop pod that we'd come down in to be able to see if I got any actual reward when I left the planet and this is something unfortunately for me that hasn't been working for the last few weekends and that's the inventory within your drop pod so like there was one of the beta weekends, not the Arctic one. I think it might have been the one before or the one after the Arctic. I can't quite remember which way round it was. We had to get this bio container or some sort of capsule. I can't remember exactly what it was. And you had to take it back to your drop pod. And I noticed it wouldn't allow me to put it into the drop pod for some reason. Where on previous weekends, it had allowed me to drag and drop items from my inventory into my drop pod's inventory. This time round, it did exactly the same thing. It wouldn't allow me to put these scales into the inventory of the drop pod. And it does say that when you leave the planet, everything in your inventory will pretty much be lost. So that for me was a little bit frustrating. It could be a bug. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong because as I've said, I've tested it previously and it allowed me to put things in there. The fact that there is no actual space station for you to go up to at the moment anyway and keep these items meant that it didn't really matter too much for me. But it is just something I'd like to point out because I'm not sure if the developers are aware of these issues. And I know they do watch a lot of the Icarus videos. So if you guys are watching and if you can fix that before the game comes out into its final release for me, that'd be great. <laughs> because I do want to be able to launch back off the planet with all my hard earned exotics, you know. But I am really excited for the final release of Icarus and I just think for the price that they're asking for this game is extremely low for the quality and enjoyment that I've personally got from this game so far. Now I do have to say that I did receive the beta key for free and this is no endorsement. I'm not getting paid for any endorsement. This is just my personal feelings on the game. As you guys know, I am really big into my survival games and I feel that this is a really good change up from a lot of the survival games that are out there at the moment. I like the risk from the wildlife. I really enjoy the different storms that they're throwing into the mix and having to build shelters that are going to be able to survive these specific storms. It's really like man against nature, which for me is kind of what survival is about. You know what I mean? It's not surviving the zombie apocalypse, which is obviously still a really cool idea. But I do like the sci-fi aspect of this. And I'm really, really excited to see what other types of biomes they come up with. I mean, I'm not sure if the biomes in this game are going to be purely based on terraformed copies of an Earth-like planet. Or if there's going to be alien planets that you're going to be able to go down onto that are going to be totally alien with alien wildlife and plant life and things like that and different types of risks involved with those different environments. Because, you know, I'm kind of into my sci-fi and I really do like when you watch one of these sci-fi programs where people are exploring new worlds even a flower that looks like it could be totally harmless could give us some sort of spore that could pretty much kill you. And I like that idea. I'm hoping they're going to include lots of different variation within the types of planets or biomes that you're going to be able to encounter within this game. Now, I'm sure they're going to continue to work on the type of equipment and items that you're going to be able to craft and use within the game. And again, something I'm really excited to see. But I just think at this point, the state of the game for me is pretty solid. And if this game was released into early access tomorrow, I would most definitely purchase it based on my experience in the game so far. I think Icarus has got a very bright future. And for any of you out there that are into the survival genre that haven't picked up the beta pass yet with your pre-order then do pre-order the game you can try it on the next beta weekend which is coming up soon and if you don't like it you can get a full refund so yeah just check it out guys but there you go there's my feelings on the game so far there's probably way more that i could talk about and probably things that i've missed but these are the main things on my mind at the moment let me know how you guys are feeling about icarus at this point in time in the comments let me know how you feel how your experience is if you're having fun or not so don't forget to like comment and subscribe watch this space for more icarus and i'll catch you guys on another video thanks for watching